So good to have you join us today. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Ijeun in Seoul. We have plenty on our plate today, so let's get started with a look at the day's highlights. Just a day after a full strike from Hyundai Motors Labor Union, Korea's subway and railway workers wage a joint strike against the government's performance-based pay system. No more expensive meals and lavish gifts for public officials, teachers and journalists. But Korea's first an anti-graft law, or the Kim Young-nan Act, is set to come into force on Wednesday. These stories are more coming right up. Korea's unionized subway and railway workers are staging a strike, the first of its kind in 22 years, to protest against a government-led adoption of a performance-based pay system. Now, nearly 10,000 people are estimated to be participating in the walkout, but with temporary workers filling in, most subway and railway trains are operating as usual. Unionized subway workers in Seoul and the southern port city of Busan, as well as railway workers across the country, are taking part in the strike. Seoul subway line number nine, however, will run as usual as it's run by a private operator. Off-peak subway services will run at about 80 percent of normal capacity. Regular train services will only run at 60 percent, but KTX bullet train services will operate at usual levels this week. The government has called for an immediate end to the strike and said the protesters will be dealt with strictly and according to the law. The first U.S. presidential debate expected to hit Super Bowl-sized ratings drew to a close with fiery disputes between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump on everything from climate change, gun control and, of course, the economy. They headed in neck and neck, but who came out the winner? Our Hwang Ho-jun has the highlights. The first official presidential face-off took place on Monday night local time in New York, which, according to CNN ORC poll results, handed a victory to Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. On the trade front, Donald Trump pointed to America's trade deficit to illustrate the country's weakened standing in the global economy. He called NAFTA, signed while Clinton was the first lady, the worst trade agreement ever. Trump also criticized Clinton for backing the Trans-Pacific Partnership deal while she was Secretary of State, accusing her of then changing her stance. Clinton shot back at Trump, saying he lives in his own reality and fails to get the facts right. On the TPP, she said she hoped it would be a good deal, but concluded that it failed to meet her expectations. Clinton vowed to establish a special prosecutor to enforce and oversee trade deals to ensure accountability from U.S. trade partners. National debt and job creation were also heated issues of debate. Trump criticized the current Obama administration for skyrocketing national debt levels, vowing to do all he can to reduce the burden. Clinton claimed that her economic plan would create 10 million jobs, while Trump's plan would cost the nation 3.5 million jobs at home. With just about 40 days left until the election, the first presidential debate is expected to be widely influential in shaping the outcome. The second televised debate will take place on October 9th. Paul Business Daily. And over in the UK, Arirang TV has begun broadcasting on local satellite networks for the very first time. In light of this, we look at the British economy, where we see panic fading among economists when it comes to the short-term impact from Britain's exit from the EU. Growth in the UK is projected to stay at levels maintained before the referendum. According to Her Majesty's Treasury, forecasts for this year's GDP growth has returned to 1.8 percent after dropping to 1.5 percent immediately after the June vote. This sentiment is reflected in Britain's automobile industry, considered a key barometer of economic conditions. The Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders says car sales expanded by more than 3 percent last month on year, selling more than 81,000 units, which is the highest monthly sales volume since 2005. The unemployment rate has also seen a dip to under 5 percent during the May to July period. Crude futures rebounded on Monday as major oil producers gathered to discuss ways to support the market. West Texas Intermediate for November delivery traded up 3.3 percent to settle at $45.93 a barrel. Brent crude futures ended the session at $47.35, also up more than 3 percent. 
Now, the rise comes as large oil producing countries get ready to meet informally during the International Energy Forum in Algeria, where they will discuss measures to stabilize the market. Analysts say although a deal may not be imminent, the meeting will help increase the chances of producers eventually taking action. The lackluster economy is extending its effects to giving. Giving between households and to charities was down in the second quarter. This says income growth remains flat and the outlook leaves little room for optimism. Our Eunice Kim has more. It appears the joy of giving is being flattened by a pervading sentiment of pessimism. Statistics Korea data shows cash changing hands between households made up of two or more people averaged $171 in the second quarter. That is a fall of 3.7 percent from the year before. This does include money sent to elderly parents living on their own or to offspring studying abroad. But it mostly consists of cash gifts offered to those getting married or as a condolence gesture to those mourning a family death. The near 4% dip in the April through June period is the second back to back quarter of contraction. Meanwhile, giving to nonprofits like religious or civic organizations also saw a dip. Of 3.1 percent year over year, coming in at some 93 U.S. dollars for the second quarter. That's the fourth consecutive quarter of declines for donations. So then, is it just sentiment? Latest figures from Statistics Korea show that, in fact, monthly income remained flat for Korean households in the second quarter, up. 0.8 percent on year in nominal figures, but down 0.2 percent when adjusted for inflation. And as data showed income inequality widened in the second quarter, households were setting aside what little more they could into their savings accounts. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. Thousand Korean won, or roughly 27 U.S. dollars. That's the price cap on meals that public officials, journalists, and private school faculty are allowed to be treated to under the Anti-Corruption and Bribery Prohibition Act, more commonly known as the Kim Young-nan Act, which is set to kick in tomorrow. Now, the law also prohibits receiving gifts exceeding 50,000 won, or about $45, and cash gifts for weddings and funerals above 100,000 won from job-related contacts. Now, these new restrictions are aimed at curbing bribery and corruption by those in the public sector and positions of influence, but it has sparked concern about the potential impact it might have on consumption and the overall economy. Let's take a closer look. Gift giving in Korea will be something to be more careful about as the country's first ever anti-graft law is set to take effect on Wednesday. The Kim Young-nan Act, named after the former Anti-Corruption and Civil Rights Commission chief who proposed it in 2011, looks to tackle corruption by putting a limit on the exchange of lavish gifts and expensive meals among public officials, teachers, journalists and their spouses. The law puts a price limit on meals at 30,000 won per person, gifts at 50,000 and money given for ceremonial occasions at 100,000. For a start, the law will apply to some 4 million people. Already, restaurants frequented by public officials are adjusting their prices of their meals to under 30,000 won. Earlier this month, department stores rolled out Chuseok holiday gift sets under 50,000 won, targeting cautious gift givers. Although there are concerns the law could dampen already sluggish domestic consumption, there are also high hopes that it'll help clean up the country in the long run by clamping down on corruption that has long weighed down economic growth and future development. 
And for more on this, Professor Yang Jun Suk from the Catholic University of Korea joins us in the studio today. Great to have you here. Happy to be here. So with Korea's first ever anti-graft law, the Kim Young Nan Act, set to take effect starting tomorrow, there are hopes that this will help eradicate corruption, especially among public officials. Now at this point, we're wondering how does corruption typically affect a country's economic development in the long run, and how would rooting out these practices actually help to boost economic growth? Okay, well, uh, there has been a slew of studies, case studies, regression studies, database studies, which say that corruption reduces uh, uh, economic growth. Uh, for example, uh, bureaucrats, uh, by taking corruption, increases costs and uncertainty for businesses. It also drains off a lot of entrepreneurial talent, mm. uh, since rather than create businesses of their own, they can make more money going into the government sector and taking uh, bribes. Now, Korea has, hasn't been too great on the uh, corruption issue. Mm. Uh, Korea's ranked uh, 37 out of 167 countries in Transparency International Corruption Perception Index. And among OECD countries, it's been ranked along the uh, lower half in terms of their corruption. I think I should make two points here. Okay. Uh, the first is that, well, this law was created because, well, we, uh, uh, Taking bribes for uh, favors has always been illegal. Mm. But there has been a couple of court cases where they thought that they uh, caught this government official for corruption, but they could not prove causality, that the uh, payment resulted in a favor. Mm. So one thing that this law does is if you received uh, gifts ab above certain amount automatically, then you're presumed guilty. Okay. So that makes that proof a lot easier, supposedly. And then secondly, because it set the bar for having uh, gifts so low at uh, 30,000 won for meals, 50,000 won per, uh, for gifts, mm -hmm. uh, it'll hopefully cut down on some of the uh, everyday gift giving that we see. And what I'm really hoping is that by cutting out those uh, smaller gifts, we see Korea become more professionalized mm. so that instead of businesses or uh, transactions running on, say, sort of more personal basis, we'll see it more on pro uh, professional, uh, neutral, objective basis. And merit-based, I yeah, guess. Uh, yes. Well, now we know that it's civil servants, journalists, and private school teachers that are subjected to this law. Now, why were these specific professions selected? Okay, well, government uh, officials, uh, it's pretty obvious. Uh, they can uh, have substantial effect on people's lives. Uh, what's sort of unusual about this law compared to other countries is that uh, teachers, university professors, whether they be in the public or private universities, uh, teachers, uh, whether they're in public schools or private schools, and journalists mm. well, also, again, uh, even if they were uh, employed privately, they're also covered under this law. Okay. I think that shows how much uh, influence these groups have in Korean uh, Korean culture, Korean politics, Korean economics, and they're almost treated as a government official in mm. terms of the, what kind of powers they have and what kind of influence they have. Now, there are concerns that as experts have warned that the law could dampen consumption and deal a serious blow to a ready sluggish domestic economy. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, well, there definitely will be some shock because you'll, uh, uh, Koreans uh, give gifts a lot, and a lot of that will be declared illegal after uh, uh, this law go, uh, mm. takes a effect. Uh, Ministry of Agriculture estimates that the agricultural sector will be hit by about 2.3 trillion won. Uh, restaurant sector will be hit by about 4.2 trillion won. Wow. I personally think that these are sort of overestimates mm. uh, because what we see in a lot of cases where uh, people take somebody out for uh, this type of uh, gift meal or gift uh, this type of uh, official sort of official mm -hmm. gift is that well people have a rough idea on how much these things cost right and you don't want to give cheap meals to people you are uh, taking out to impress mm. so you don't really see a lot of price competition here and by taking away th these type of transactions by uh, uh, making these type of uh, sort of gift gift uh, gift giving and uh, Meal, uh, meals 
illegal, uh, we'll hopefully we'll see a more value-based competition mm. on base of restaurants and base of uh, agricultural sector. So I think the numbers that they're citing right now, while there will be a shock, is uh, overestimated. And definitely less pressure on gift givers too. Oh, right? definitely. Yeah. Well, how do we compare this law with other countries then? I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier before, but are there any other countries in the world that have similar anti-graft laws here in Korea? Well, most advanced countries do have a law similar to this, uh, limiting the amount of gifts that uh, government officials can take. For example, the United States, uh, government officials cannot uh, get gifts over $20 or uh, over the year uh, get multiple gifts uh, which are above $50. Okay. If they do, then they have to uh, declare it and uh, give it to the government mm. or get special permission that they can keep it. Singapore has a very tough law. They cannot accept any gifts at all. Oh, wow. And if uh, they uh, do receive gifts, then they are liable to about 100,000 Singapore dollars of penalty or five years in prison. Mm. Now, while it will go into effect on Wednesday, what do you think can be done so that the law serves its purpose of reducing corruption, promoting greater transparency, and also bringing about more economic benefits while having minimize minimum negative side effects. Okay, well, uh, part of the reason this law was passed was to make prosecution of these uh, large-scale uh, bribes le uh, more easy to mm. prove. Uh, but first of all, prosecutors have to catch them, and there's some ambiguities in the law which has to be worked out during the first few cases. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it's because you got rid of a lot of these smaller gifts, I'm hoping that the Korean economy will be more professionalized. Mm. Uh, so I think uh, it'll be more important in the long run because it'll be set a basis for a professional relationship between Korean uh, professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to uh, ha uh, deal with large corruption, uh, then I think the first few cases and interpretation of this law in a trial will be very important. All right. Thank you so much for your insight today, Professor. Thank you. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll be back tomorrow at 4.10 p.m. Korea time for your Business Daily. Until then, goodbye.